uh, template, uh, motion graphics template marketplace, actually a library uh, subscription based, which allows, us, allows our users to uh, log into our platform, pick a template they like, video templates like logo stingers, intros, outros, transitions, stuff like that. And uh, they can get it rendered out with their settings, their logo, their color, their, their text within four to five minutes. So I'm just going to show you how it looks in the action. So they just log into our platform, they pick a template they like, they can upload the logo. So here I uploaded Blender logo. Then type, it, type in some text, pick a color to match the logo name the video and click render. And in about four to five minutes, they will have a download link for .mp4 file that they can play and put in front of their video, their YouTube clip, their show, whatever. So as you might have guessed, a lot of these templates, all of these, these templates are Blender files. .blend files ready for animation with placeholder logos, text, and colors. And Blender does all the heavy lifting in the background. So uh, as you can see, uh, a lot of stuff that we have. Like we currently have, I'm just gonna skip this. So we have um, 60,000 users, 800, over 800,000 videos rendered. Now my, I met with my colleagues yesterday and they corrected me, this was two months old. It's 75,000 users and a million videos rendered. <laughs> yeah. So Two and a half, two and a half thousand videos rendered each day. That's amazing. And we have 700 plus templates, which the library that's in, increasing every day. Uh, this is not uh, template marketplaces are not new thing. You have uh, your video hive, like Envato's video hive, with 47,000 After Effects templates and 4,000 Cinema 4D templates. You have Pond 5 with a huge selection of After Effects templates, and even Blender Market has things that could be considered uh, motion graphics template. This is actually a preset. But uh, but what's common for all of these is that user needs to have have access to an app like After Effects or Blender, and needs to know how to use that app to get his final result. Now, for Blender, owning an app is not a problem. For After Effects, it's a big problem for a lot of people. And uh, even though these templates are super easy to customize, some, some people really need to hire a freelance animator to customize the template that they, they already purchased. So I'm going to talk about some challenges of creating this fully automated solution. Uh, keep in mind that anything that anyone uploads needs to work out correctly without any user input. So pick a logo, any logo, and it's going to work on our platform. So as you can see in this image, there's a lot of different logos out there, different colors, different shapes, most importantly, different aspect ratios. There are wide logos, tall logos, and kind of square, round ones like Apple here. So let's say one day Coca-Cola wants to use our, our template. And here's Coca-Cola logo in Blender. And they're super happy, and they call NBA, and they say you should use these guys, and NBA uploads their logo. It's now completely different. Like it's no longer vertical; it's squished, because this plane was UV unwrapped and created for Coca-Cola logo, for a wide logo. And now human input is required. Animator needs to go in and reshape this plane or UV unwrap it different, differently. Uh, Apple would not be happy either. Uh, so. We don't have two and a half thousand animators on standby to, to do this. So this needs to work out of the boxes, whatever they upload. So just by looking at the, just by looking at UVA image editor in Blender, when there's nothing loaded in it, the solution presented itself. Like Blender really likes it when image is square, especially if it's 10, 24, or 4, 20, 48. So we use the external app to conform any logo to this square texture. Look, no matter what our users upload, it will be placed on a square, transparent texture. So we don't care if half of it is empty. We care about ha the, the part of the texture that's not empty. And if that's visible, it's going to work. And we always know what we're working on. It's always square. So they can, an animator can just put it on a, on a single plane and do something around it. They can separate it into pieces, explode it, twist it around, or project that, te that, te that texture onto moving pieces or whatnot. So that solved the issue of aspect ratio. We're re really happy with this solution. We never needed to look back. Uh, what about colors? So uh, when we started working with videos, we had zero customers. We didn't know who's going to be using this. So we, the only thing we could look at was, was this b with these b big brands with their brand books. And they have huge brand books all available online. This is from McDonald's. 
available online. We saw how they use their logos in, in colors. And a lot of these brands have what's called logo negative. That's the last one here on the blue, blue square. Uh, brands like certain colors, they dislike other colors. Like McDonald's here decided that their logo looks good on red and green. And if you go into their restaurants, you'll see like wood and dark green and stuff. But if it's on blue, and sometimes they can't control what they're going to need to put their logo on if they're branding something, they're going to opt out for logo negative, which is completely white logo, just a logo silhouette, pure white. So we figured out why not help out these people with just uh, make it look good from the start and make uh, logo negative really easy to use. So we could just use logo alpha, whatever they upload, we can take alpha as a silhouette and just colorize it as white. So we made these templates that have pure white logo, right? Like here, this, this is like an 8-bit gaming template. Uh, and it has blue sky. What if their logo is blue? It's not going to look good. And they're going to complain. So we made it white. It's always going to be white. And we wrote that down. Like your logo is going to be pure white. This one as well, we just liked how it looked like. Cool tr contrast between white logo and, and uh, red color. Now I'm going to stop at this template because this, is, this was a breaking point for me. Uh, because we received a ticket from a user who complained that their image came out like this, like it was just a square. So, so immediately I knew, I knew what, what was going on. Her logo didn't have alpha channel, so it was just fully opaque, nothing to see there. But before I wrote back to her, I asked for an image. I wanted to double check, and I got something like this. Weird logo, right? So uh, turns out it was, this is not the actual photo, I'm not using people's personal stuff, but uh, turns out it was an old lady and it was her granddaughter's graduation. She wanted to do something special for her. So she decided to explode her face in a million pieces in this template. <laughs> so it wasn't my job to judge the template choice for this particular event, but it was my job to figure out what our users want, what, what, their, cost, uh, what their needs are, what, what, they're, what they're expecting to get. So I went back and saw all the other tickets that were, and there were a lot of tic support tickets. I'm talking about support. Uh, support tickets about this same issue. People were just not uploading logos with transparency. They would upload whatever, you know. And that really helped us uh, understand what sort of customers our users are, users are. These were not huge brands like, uh, like what, what do I have, Coca-Cola and whatever. These were small businesses. They didn't have brand books. They had one logo that someone made for them ages ago, and they lost all their work files, and this is all they have. Or families. Families don't have brand books either. Definitely don't have logo negatives. So we stopped the whole logo negative thing, and uh, we started focusing more on, we started testing our templates so it works with everything, black, white, all the colors, everything needs to work out fine, with alpha, without alpha. And uh, we started making more templates that have photos in them, not just logos. So as you can see here, it's no longer just upload your logo, upload your photo. So stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, next point of our customization, so I, I'm done with images, is a oh, restaurant. Like, Blender's text. Now this image sums up the whole section, right? We really, really hate Blender's text because it's really, uh, sorry guys, it's really bad. So uh, why, why is it bad? Uh, it, it can either be a flat, extruded, or with a little bit bevel on it, and that's it. Uh, for animation, there's not many options that we can do without converting it to mesh. And once we convert it to, to mesh, we can no longer influence that text object. It can be changed to whatever our users want. So we're stuck with these basic Blender options with text. We had some limited su success with uh, font objects. I don't know if people know about font objects. The, in Blender, they allow you to create an uh, object for each character in the alphabet, and it will be instanced instead of that, that character when you type in text, and it's awesome. Uh, but it requires you to painstakingly recreate each letter of the alphabet, along with all the punctuation special characters, and in case of videos, and uh, uh, all extra languages like Latin, extended, and Cyrillic if possible. So huge amount of work to get one template to work. Now, uh, also alignment. Alignment is horrible in Blender. Like left, right, and centered is fine. It works as expected. But this is top base, uh, vertical alignment. This is top base. This is top. It's not a top. It's all the way down there. And this is centered. You can see where the origin is. That's not a center. And I, I tried, tried a lot of variations, and it just doesn't work. So that's a huge problem for us, because we don't know what our users are going to input. So, and we can manually just shift it around. It needs to work right away. 
Also, um, uh, text scaling is a huge issue because if you have a template that has something like this, it, has, it says your text here, and if you type in something of similar length, it's going to work fine. But some people decide to put their life story in this, in, this, in this text field. So, as you can see, there's a problem. It goes off screen both ways. So with our team of scientists, we created <laughs> a, formula, a formula that scales the text down the more characters are entered. So short text, longer text here, much longer text here. It just scales it down. More characters are input, smaller the text size. Um, now, it usually works. But sometimes it doesn't, because 10 Ws is not the same as 10 Is. Character count is same, but text scale is same. But 10 Ws will just go off screen. So we're kind of counting on our users to input a reasonable mix of not wide and narrow letters, also known as words, instead of just typing W, 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 W. So yeah. Also, uh, we tried all various other solutions, and we failed. Like You can't get text to behave and scale down, because it operates in this weird shady area between object scale and font scale, font size. So you can mess with these around and get the same looking object with totally different values. So I'm going to skip colors, because co colors are very straightforward. You just change color. To, uh, but I'm going to talk about speed. So as you could see, it's all rendered on our servers. So speed is important. Also, we want you know, it means uh, higher price. Of course, if, if it renders slow, it's higher price. And also, we want our users to get their videos really, really fast, like four minutes tops. So how do we achieve that in Blender? If you go online and you check for speed up speed up tips for Blender, you'll see cycle stuff. You'll see reduced number of bounces, reduced reduce number of samples. You'll use clipping and stuff like that. We all know that. But uh, there's no way to get it as fast as we need it. We need it in 20 seconds per frame on a desktop uh, computer. So one, the busiest frame of the animation needs to render in 20 seconds on your average uh, desktop. So no way to get a noiseless result, even with denoiser on, on in cycles. So we don't render in cycles. We render in Blender Eternal. I know, shocking, right? But we don't have to render it completely. This is a cycles template. This is a type cycles animation. This is not one of our best ones, but a good one to explain how we do it, how we speed up the things. So some spheres go around this logo, and it appears. If you could you take a look at this, is the busiest frame of this animation. Like there's some uh, emissive material which illuminates the whole scene with global illumination. There's some ambient occlusion there and high quality motion blur. This is all cycles, right? Everyone recognizes that. You can't do that in Blender internal. So the trick is it's to figure out what, what will change in between these renders. We will only need to render the things that change. Uh, the things that change is logo in this template and color. So when you think color, you say, OK, we need to re-render re all these spheres going around. But you don't. Let's start. Uh, we start with the background. Which we, we use heavy compositing here. We start with the background, which is simple blend, color blend. And then we pre-render the first material. There are two, materi two uh, colored materials and a missing one. We just pre-render the first one as pure white. And then we colorize it with mix, node, mix color node set to multiply, like this. And then we add another one and colorize that one as well. It's all pre-rendered, takes a second to composite. Emissive material, colorize that as well. Almost there, not quite yet. And now we change the scene. We set the white emissive material to pure white and everything else to pure black. And we get to see where the light goes in this scene, because there's this one emissive material. And we get to see, see where, 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 what it influences. So we colorize that too, and we add it on top of the previous template. And here we go. It has lighting. It's col it's col this emissive material is colorizing all this other, 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 other stuff. Also, logo is peeking into in, in somewhere in between these these spheres. So we render out a mask for logo. We will just render logo as a shadeless material. It takes half a second to render, and use its alpha and this alpha and this mask to. Re this is shading on logo, and there it is, a logo in between these spheres. So some post processing, and this is a node tree for this for this compositing. We just change these three colors. That's all we do, and this is Blender internal now. Pretty much the same. And it renders super fast. So cycles render, 1 minute, 25 seconds. Blender internal render, 3 seconds. That's a huge improvement in speed. <laughs> Thanks. Now, are they identical? 
<laughs> nope, no they're not. But you wouldn't have known that if I haven't shown you cycles in Blender internal. You wouldn't have known that, known that. And I would even argue that this Blender internal version is better for color customization because in cycles much more stuff is happening around and this emissive material is colorizing everything. You, you can't see individual colors. This, and this is another example. This is a grayscale render of these pins. They're moving up and down. And then we colorize it. It's pre-rendered, colorize it. And then we recycle the scene. We load it in Blender internal. We just project. We, we already have these pins where they were in cycles render, right? And we project logo on top of it using shadeless material and mask transparency. So if there's a pin covering logo, it's going to mask it. And it's exactly where it would be in, in the cycles. And we just use that as influence. And with some post-processing and some lens flares on top of it, you got a pretty nice looking template. Technically, it's Blender internal, but it's not right. So very fast, super fast. Of course, we are very excited about EV Render Engine. And ever since last conference, we funded the development of Armory 3D Render Engine Lubos was presenting here. It's also super, super cool real-time render engine. This one single frame illustrates its power. So we're ready to use that in our workflow as well. Now, when we were sure that we knew what we were doing with this automation stuff, we started experimenting and doing other stuff as well. Uh, we started making live action templates. Uh, we started filming live footage and combining it with uh, CGI element is elements in, inside Blender, and it worked out pretty fine. We used Blender's motion capture, object camera tracking, uh, compositing, keying, uh, masking, rotoscoping, everything inside Blender, and we were quite happy with it. You can see it here. Like, so pretty much Blender is a viable solution for this sort of stuff happen. OK, moving on. So uh, once I, I told you about how we automate stuff. And um, we want Blender to be awesome. We want it to be better in motion graphics world. So I'm going to use the privilege of standing here at Blender conference to offer some suggestions for some things that could be changed maybe in Blender that would make it really, really better for motion graphics art artists out there. So it's better non-destructive text objects workflow. Scenes as compositions, I'm going to get to each one of these. Grouped animation instancing and image, texture, image effects on textures. So non-destructive text. I already started talking about it when I spoke about text. Basically, when you see how much these, these are modifiers for mesh objects, these are modifiers for text objects, much less. And even the ones that are on this list don't really work as expected. Not much you can do with text. Right now, if you want to reveal text in some interesting way, this is the only thing we can do. We can slide it in from the side, scale it up, maybe play with some character spacing and rotate it into view. We need to be able to do more stuff like this. This is animation nodes. Go, uh, top examples were animation nodes. We can't emit particles from text. Did you know that? For this, I had to convert it into mesh. And this is maybe too much. <laughs> so text needs to be non-destructive. We need to be able to work with text, do something awesome with it, and be able to go back and change the text. This is not just important for us as fully automated solution. This is important for everyone. Imagine you have, you're a motion graphics artist, and you have a client, and you finalize your great video. And they say, this is it, this is 100% done. Oh, just one, one thing, can you just change that text to something else? You, you can't. You just have to go back and do everything again. So scenes as, co as compositions. For motion graphics, it's very important to be able to do something very complex somewhere else, and then place that in your main scene and instance it in space and time as well, and scale it up, down, and do that. You immediately reach a lot of complexity like that. So if you take a look at After Effects, this is how it works. Like, this is a composition where you set up this complex high-tech ring animation, and then you just instance it in your main scene, and offset it, scale it up, put it in the depth of field, stuff, and you offset it in time so they don't all play at the same time. And immediately you have some futuristic, hard-looking thing. Uh, we can't do that in Blender right now. N not easily, though. Uh, but Blender has scenes that not many people use. And scenes could be our compositions, right? Uh, it's not really possible now, but with the rise of EV render engine, real-time rendering, couldn't we have a feed from camera in scene two pointing out itself something awesome we made be a texture in scene one that we can then offset in time and do whatever with it? It would speed up the process immensely. Grouped animation instancing, similar thing. Like, 
I have a simple motion graphics element here. Like I want to do something with this. So it's just a curve that loops. And I can instance it. That's not a problem. Alt, Alt D, right? Scale it up. Uh, and if I want to offset it in time so it's not boring as this, I will need to click here in NLA editor, reveal all this stuff, reveal actions, and move action around. And now they fire, fire off in sequence. It's much more interesting, right? But what if I do, uh, I can also make copies of this object and offset their curves, but now they're no longer instances. If I want to go back and change my mind, no way to do it. But what if I, if I do something more complex, not a single object, but a group of objects doing something interesting, and I want to do the same thing with, uh, with them? I can instance them. That's not a problem at all. But there, there's no way to offset it in time. This is boring. This is nothing, right? We need to be able to do this. So some sort of group animation that groups the and actions, grouped action that groups actions of all the child objects, would allow us to easily create rich and complex motion graphics with ease in Blender. For this, I had to, again, convert them to separate objects. And look at the mess that was made in, in the curves. There's now 50 objects, I believe, busier curve 50. So uh, it's a mess if I want to change something later on. And texture effects, finally. Uh, wouldn't it be awesome if we had, uh, we, we can do stuff to images in Compositor, but we need to be able to influence textures while they're textures on, on a plane or on, on an object. So here, let's say we have this texture. Why shouldn't we have like a pixelate or find edges or blur on the texture? And easily you could create something like this, like logo being formed from the drawing first and uh, pixelization effect getting gaining resolution as it forms and stuff like that. So yeah, that's it. And uh, finally, this is the end of this presentation soon. Um, uh, I keep seeing a lot of great motion graphics artists out there posting their amazing work on Twitter with comments such as, I'm testing animation nodes. I'm testing sphere, something with spheres, spheres. What do you guys think? I'm testing this, testing that, trying out this, trying out that. No one says, I did this for a client or I got paid to do this, you know? And uh, for for us to grow as a community of motion graphic artists using Blender, we need professionals. And what we hope to do is convert videos into a true mar marketplace where anyone with skills in motion graphics in Blender can up upload their template and earn percentage of each sale on our platform. So we would immediately turn a lot of hobbyists into professionals. Uh, we already developed an add-on that uh, simplifies the upload of a motion graphic template to our, to our uh, platform. Uh, you just basically set up everything you click publish, you get a finished zip file that you upload to our, to our platform. And if it all checks out on the platform, that's it, you're done. So it's called Videos Creators, work title, we're not married to it. Uh, so that's pretty much the end of this presentation. Feel free to drag me away from free coffee and chocolate there in, in the lobby to discuss anything I just said about, said, talked about. You've been a wonderful audience. Keep blending and I'll see you around. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>